In this video, we'll talk about linked genes. The law of independent assortment states that which allele you inherit from one gene has no bearing on which allele you will inherit from another gene. For example, if you're dealing with two genes, gene A and gene B, and you are heterozygous for both genes, if you pass on the dominant allele of gene A into a gamete, you are equally likely to pass on the dominant or the recessive alleles for gene B. But that is not always true. Our DNA exists in the form of strands called chromosomes, and these chromosomes contain many genes all tethered together on that chromosome. For the most part, a genome contains two of each type of chromosome. In meiosis, when gametes, eggs and sperm, are being produced, an organism will pass on only one of each type of chromosome to the egg or sperm, meaning only half of the genome moves into the gamete. This gamete will go on to fuse with the gamete of another organism to form a new organism containing a full genome. Genes carried together, tethered on the same chromosome, are said to be linked genes. As such, two alleles that are connected are more likely to be inherited together. Let's think back to our two gene example. We have an organism heterozygous for gene A and gene B. If these genes are linked together on a chromosome, then that would look like this. Here we see one chromosome with the dominant allele of both genes A and B and the other with the recessive alleles for both genes. During meiosis, a gamete will either receive this chromosome or this chromosome, meaning that this organism will either pass on the two dominant alleles or the two recessive alleles. In a case like this, where two genes are linked, the alleles do not assort independently. The allele you inherit for gene A definitely has a bearing on what you inherit for gene B. The dominant allele of gene A is inherited with the dominant allele of gene B, and the two recessive alleles are inherited together. Let's add one additional wrinkle. In this scenario, if you inherit the dominant allele for gene A, it makes you more likely to inherit the dominant allele of gene B, but this does not happen all the time. In meiosis, the process of crossing over or recombination occurs, causing portions of homologous chromosomes to rearrange. This means that in meiosis, crossing over could occur between gene A and gene B, separating the linked alleles. If crossing over occurred in this case, the organism would pass down the dominant allele of gene A with the recessive allele for gene B and the recessive allele of gene A would move into a gamete with the dominant allele of gene B. So how often do linked genes get passed on together? That depends on the recombination frequency between the two genes. How often these genes are separated via crossing over in meiosis. Recombination frequency is more or less based on the distance between the two genes. So the closer together these genes are, the more likely they are to be inherited together. The further apart they are, the more likely they are to be separated via crossing over in meiosis, creating gametes in which allele combinations on the chromosomes are different from the parent genotype. So to sum it up, genes that are located near each other on the same chromosome are said to be linked, and they are more likely to be inherited together. If you'd like to learn how to determine the recombination frequency between two genes, check out my video on the two-point test cross.